This is SSN. Story Studio Network. Welcome to the Leading Ladies Networking After Show. I'm your host, Erin Travers. For this first ever behind the scenes drop, we're gonna take you directly to the source of the magic. So this episode we recorded quite literally in the back booth at Tribeca in downtown Halifax. So you're gonna hear all of the sounds of a room full of more than 100 powerful women who have gathered to celebrate themselves, to celebrate each other and to network. So. The conversation that you're about to hear is the one that I had with leading ladies CEO, Mena Riley, an absolute boss in her own right. And you won't be able to see her, but believe me when I tell you she was dressed like an Oscar statue for the event. Gorgeous, gold everywhere. And it truly was a celebration of Mena's secret sauce and her ability to bring so many amazing women into one space all at the same time. The other voice you are going to hear is another absolute boss woman, Nicole Miles Brook. Now, Nicole wears many, many hats, fashionable, I might add, uh, but you may know her as the president at Big Eric's Inc. And she's also a limited partner in the Women's Equity Lab. It was recently started up about a year ago, and it's the only pan-Atlantic angel fund investing across all four Atlantic Canadian provinces. So no big deal, right? <laughs> And we had a lot of fun having this introductory conversation. I hope you enjoy it. We talk about Mena's Milestone 50th event, the energy, and the why behind networking. Holy, holy, welcome in. This is the very first Leading Ladies Networking after show during the show. What? We're all in the show right now. And I'm joined by Mena Riley, who is a walking, talking Oscar statue right now. <laughs> she does look like an award. I feel like one right I now. I want to hold you <laughs> and make an acceptance speech. And Nicole Milesbrook is joining us here today. And I thought that having the two of you guys here for this premier conversation made the most sense. Because yes. you two kind of go together like peas and carrots. Ah, right? that is That's the so best sweet. compliment you could give me. So I know that we're here at the event and we want to get out there too. How many women are in this room right now with us? There are a hundred people in this room right now. Right, which is why it sounds like there are a hundred <laughs> yes. people in this room right it now. It sounds like there's a hundred people on this podcast. So Nicole, I'm going to ask you a question because you, you are a leading lady. And I think part of men is magic if I can call it that, in putting together 50 events, bringing together thousands of connections, is this idea of leadership. Yes. Tell me what that, like, where's the leadership in this room? What it, when I say women's leadership, what does that mean to you? I think it can mean so many different things, depending on who you're talking about. But I think the magic that Mena has is that she helps everyone find what that means for them. I think in times in the past when we thought of leaders, we thought of probably one scenario of what that looked like. People in positions of power, people with lots of money, people with fancy titles, people with et cetera, et cetera. Men has helped me and helped lots of other women who I know and would attest to the fact find their own power, regardless of all those things that I just described. Regardless of how many people they have reporting to them, how many dollars they have in the bank account, and, you know, regardless of their title. And I think that's why so many people are magnetically attracted to this event, because everybody feels like they belong here. Ev what? <laughs> is <What? laughs> like, done. Podcast over. This is all we need to talk about. <laughs> um, how does that make you feel? Like, respond to that. That makes me so proud. And it does make me feel like a magical unicorn, to be honest. Um, you know, demonstrating something that you don't necessarily see, knowing that, for example, the Wing Women program, Nicole and I dreamed that up one day. So, so yeah, not to interrupt, but tell me through. about that. What, what is that? What, how do I be a Wing Woman? So the Wing Women program is really, like, we have... This event is just... Bingo. It's perfect. It's been curated to perfection in my mind because this is what we experience. But we were talking about how to add more value without adding another thing. 
And so we came up with this idea and really it has solidified the vibe in the room. So I've heard women come up to me and say, I was really excited to be a wing woman, but I didn't know how it would transform the way that I network for the rest of my life. Because before I was in the room to meet people, and this time when I was a wing woman, I was asked to help introduce and connect other people, and I had a way better experience doing that. And then they were like, I'm doing that forever, that's my new thing. And every single time we have a wing woman here, they have that same experience. And I feel like the whole room feels it, so it sets that bar way higher for connections to happen, for people to feel welcomed, regardless if they're an introvert or an extrovert or title or experience or age or background or anything. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why it was cultivated was also responding to attendees or prospective attendees who bought tickets and then chickened out at the last moment because they felt like, how am I going to, that imposter syndrome, how am I going to walk into a room full of female leaders? How Mm -hmm. am I going to feel when I don't feel like I'm going to belong if I don't have someone to come with me, if I'm new to the city, et cetera. And we said, how do we make this a safety feature, a parachute? You know, how do we put the safety net in the networking event so that people feel instant connections to at least four people in the room besides the person that's hosting. I think it's brilliant. Mena, when did you realize that this was your magic? Tell me about that one moment when you were like, bingo, this is my magic. Well, I can give an example. I think my first event, honestly, I knew I knew I cracked the code. Yeah. Um, as far as women, professional women's business networking goes, um, based on everything that was available in the landscape, I created something that I didn't want to miss myself, and I knew that everyone wouldn't want to miss it either. So right from the get-go, I was really um, sure that I created this like magical experience. But uh, kind of back to what Nicole said, I had a woman come up at, it's one of my favorite little, you know, stories. A woman came up to me and said, I bought tickets to the last six events and chickened out for everyone because I'm such an introvert and I have never done this before. And then I, I finally made myself come to this event and I'm so mad I chickened out on the other ones. Mm-hmm. So th- that's when I know that's undeniable um, that I've created this space, this networking experience for women that they can come in and feel safe. Like Nicole said, uh, that's a very important combina- you know, uh, ingredient in the whole recipe of, you know, you feel safe, you feel uplifted, you feel seen. That is just pure gold yeah. to feel seen in a room with your peers. Yeah. And to also grow your business, like, come <laughs> on, make, make some money. money. Yeah. I was definitely running tape on you when you were like, there is millions of dollars in this room. I think we as women get, and I know, Nicole, you have something to say about this. <laughs> we are underestimated for our actual value revenue wise, our 100. financial capacity to 100. drive actual revenue growth. I would slap the table, but I know that that'll be a problem for, um, <laughs> just, just warn audio. me before you do it. <laughs> I won't do it, but I'm like air hands, you know, people can't see us a hundred percent. Women are undervalued women and we do it to ourselves, but it's, it's because the stories that we have been told about where we belong and how we're supposed to show up. And if you don't fit in that box, you think you're, you're breaking something. You're breaking a rule. Well, I mean, I think MENA has become a demonstration and this event has become a demonstration that sometimes breaking the mold is where the best light comes in and where the magic happens. And I think she does a good gut check. And I can say I've been a soundboard for Mena for many, many years, and I've been so privileged to be in that position. And she's constantly gut checking. Wait, am I adding this because it feels like I have to, or am I adding this because I would not want to go to an event without this? 
am I adding this because it's important for a sponsor or am I adding this because it's important for an attendee? And, and she's constantly analyzing how it's going to affect the vibe in the room, how it's going to have people leave the room feeling. Because we described the feeling of leaving like you're floating on air when you leave these events. And that's what we want people to have. Like they've had some sort of catalyst event happening every time they're coming here. And that's what brings them coming back for more and bringing their friends. And doing the podcast because now they're going to get to hear all this extra insight and like, I don't know. I feel like this is like a hype show. It's an after show, but it's like a hype show. <laughs> so what haven't we talked about, Mana? Because this is the first of a bunch of shows we're going to do. So this is really our intro to yeah. all of this. I guess, you know what? I have a question for you. What do you want to get out of this podcast? Like when somebody listens to this down the line, do you want them to reach out, buy a ticket, like uplift another woman? What do we want to do? Like, I think uh, I definitely want them to look into Leading Ladies Networking. Yeah. Um, because we're growing not just in Nova Scotia, very proudly grown in Nova Scotia, but we're expanding. Um, And if they're in a place that geographically they can't access maybe an event like this, that they look for a way to network with other women, just the way we described, because it's priceless. It just gives you confidence to know, and I know Nicole and I um, alluded to this earlier, just having your business besties, there's nothing like it, especially as an entrepreneur, but as a woman in business. You have people speaking to you in rooms you're not in. You have people inviting you into a table where you don't know that those conversations are happening. I was having a conversation earlier tonight where someone was saying, the best jobs are the ones that are not posted. And I said, that's the biggest demonstration Ah. of why a network is so important because you want someone to hear about I have a critical need in my business. I need a consultant for this. I need, And have someone say, I know just the person for you. Let me get you connected. Yes. That's the, that's the, that's the leapfrog. That's the ripple effect. That's the pay it forward. Yeah. And we as women, I, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to get that spidey sense when I just know that if the right woman tells me the right thing, I just know that like, I don't even You're question like, I'm it. In. I'm like, this connection came through that person. Done. And you know, there's no ulterior motive. Yeah. It's not going to make that person that's giving you the introduction any money. Yeah. Right. But they're doing it for the the reason of helping support another person because they've needed the support. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they are probably doing something that they wish they would have had. I'm, I'm all in on this concept. I am not Mm -hmm. a networker at heart. I think I am actually a hermit at heart. But these are the networking events I come to, and that's why we're doing this podcast. And I think this is, I'm going to, I'm so excited that now I actually signed myself up because now I have to come to all of them. You, now you have to. Now I have to. (laughs) You've built it in. (laughs) It's too late to back out now. (laughs) All right. Well, for the Leading Ladies Networking After Show, I'm your host, Erin Trafford from Story Studio Network. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Remember, subscribe, share, tag, do all those things that you know how to do. All the stuff is in the show notes. And we're going to see you right back here on the feed, social media, in the next two or three months. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Erin. Thanks, ladies. Go be fabulous. You both look amazing. Done and dusted. No, you look amazing. You look amazing. No, you. No, you. No, you. No, you. No, you. Thanks again for listening and don't forget to share and subscribe. Of course, wherever you get your podcasts, you know what to do. Also, if you'd like to be featured on the after show, then check out the show notes for how to get in touch with either Mena or myself. The other way you can do that is just make sure you're following leading ladies over on social and DM either Mena or myself. Again, all those links in the show notes where you'd expect to find them. Again, thanks for listening for the whole team here at Story Studio Network. I'm Erin Trafford. Until next time. We know podcasts. Story Studio Network.